Has the Trump team found the Achilles heel of Kamala Harris? I'm talking, of course, about her doing nothing after being appointed as the border czar. Now what we are seeing is people who call her that are walking it back, saying that she never was appointed a border czar. What is a czar? Czar was the king of Russia until the uh, um, <clears throat> empire got taken out and a communist regime took root in 1917. So whatever this naming of a czar was something that has been done in the past also. This is nothing new. So they can't say that the czar word does not apply to United States. So they are trying desperately to try and make Kamala not be responsible for the border crisis in which up to 15 million illegals have come in after uh, Biden took office in 2021, June 20th. And she cannot explain how so many arrived here. In fact, at the beginning days, they just came in without any checks. COVID was still going on and they did not even have themselves tested for COVID. They were just allowed through. The gates were completely open. Once the world found out, everybody started lining up to come to the United States. And now you have 15 million illegals. And I can tell you, this is having a disastrous effect on many states. For example, I've heard that in the states of, uh, state of Massachusetts, the, some cities are being asked to absorb illegals. And then people are saying that you need to find a way to stay, uh, place them. How are they going to be placed? Well, they are asked to stay in schools. But then schools have to run during daytime. What are they going to do during daytime? What kind of employability skills do they have? Zip, nothing. They are not trained. Most of them can't even speak English. This is a situation that's facing the American public now. So how are they going to be used? Even if you assume that the Democrats had a very capitalistic view of the system, that they could bring in cheap labor, which would keep their costs low. And ergo, they are going to go back and start manufacturing stuff that they had outsourced to China. I'm coming with all these assumptions that this is what was the whole plan. They don't have basic skills. People from uh, countries like Middle East, they have not left like within 10 miles from where they lived for the whole of their lives. They have no idea how the world looks like. In their tunnel view, there is, it's a very terrible, uh, you know, black or white vision of the world. Why do you want to bring them in here? And who's going to train them? I have seen fast food places where they basically removed all the people. They just have one or two people who can take orders, who can converse in English. And the rest are all these trainees. Not one of them speaks English. This is a disaster in the making. Anyway, so whatever has happened has happened. But now people, especially the Trump team, is trying to affix the blame on Kamala Harris. And I'm afraid this is a huge, huge kryptonite problem for her. She's been trying to wriggle out of it. I'm going to show you a slide deck which tells you about how she's going to wriggle out of it. But even before that, I want you to watch a very quick video. What happened was this video was shot three years ago, about a couple of months after she was appointed the border czar. And in NBC, she was giving an interview and the host was asking her, why have you not yet gone to the border? And I'm going to show you the video and you can make your own conclusions. Also, many people tweeted their feelings after this interview at what Kamala had said. Here we go. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point.
New York Post as well as NBC Today for giving us these uh, video clips. So New York Post essentially took the NBC video and then added their own comments on it. I thought this was more appropriate. Plus the original NBC thing is six minutes long. I don't know if you guys will have the patience to watch through the whole thing. You, this gives you the summary. You get the idea. She was appointed the border czar and now she's trying to talk herself out of it. So how is that being done? Here is a slide deck that walks you through. But before we go through the slide deck, a small request to all of you to please like this video. Here we go. Media shifts narrative on Harris's role as border czar. So was she appointed a border czar or not? Here we go. Some mainstream media backtracks on dubbing Kamala Harris as the border czar, now downplaying her role. You know why she was called this border czar and appointed? Some people in the know say that uh, Kamala Harris had said something nasty in the presidential primaries about Jill Biden and Joe Biden and Jill never forgave her for that. So when this border crisis got started, basically, I think Biden, again, my thoughts, I think Biden agreed to do this thing for somebody and they just said, okay, open the borders, no questions asked. The CBP will just st stand out, stand behind and just watch people coming in. At that time, the word hadn't gone out that U.S. borders were open. So there wasn't that much of a crowd. But within a couple of weeks, it was like a stampede as people started coming in. And along the way, many NGOs were, you know, helping them, busing them, giving them food, finding them shelter, all sorts of stuff. People were coming mostly from Venezuela. Then they said, okay, there are four countries that we are taking, not with other countries. All that is bunkum. Nobody has checked anything. Shit all has come into the United States now, including terrorists. And now we have to face the music. Thank you, Mr. Biden. And even more thanks to you, Kamala Harris, because you are going to be the one on which this is going to be hung. I can tell you this is going to be her kryptonite. See, what happens is, why would she want to now say that she was not the border czar? Because she has nothing to show for it. But wait a minute. Did she even go there and do anything? Wasn't this something like somebody said, you know, it's a wink, wink, nod, nod situation. We're going to make you a border czar. You don't need to do anything. You can continue to discharge your vice presidential duties. What is that? Masterly inactivity. Steph Knight of Axios. She's a reporter who in 2021 said that Kamala Harris has been appointed the border czar. Now, a few hours ago, Steph walked back her own words. Here is what happened in 2021. You know, in April 2021, and an article on Axios asserted that Harris was appointed by Biden as the border czar. Same author, Steph White. Some media have started backtracking that Kamala Harris was ever appointed the border czar. When did the name border czar come up? This came up in Axios. It's a website. And the writer, her name is Steph W. Kite. Guess what? Just a few days ago, like one or two days ago, she has essentially walked back her own words. Because what she said is she never actually had the title of border czar. So you say something in an article, after three years, when that becomes a bit of a burden, walk it back and say that there never was an actual title of border czar. April 2021, the same person, that is Steph Kite, had written that Kamala Harris had been appointed as the border czar. Now, editor has to step in at this point of time to acknowledge that Axios was among the news outlets that incorrectly labeled Harris a border czar back in 2021. So they are not saying that they did not say border czar. They are just saying that we were wrong. There was never a title called border czar. But in the previous uh, presidencies, we have seen, we have seen these czar titles being given. And I'm going to give you an example of that or more than one example of that in just a few slides from now. So the debate over whether Harris was ever a border czar, a label given to her by Republican critics is significant. Actually, you know what? There is some truth that she was a border czar. Why? Because somebody else vacated that spot, which Kamala Harris occupied. And I'm going to come to that in just a moment. The Trump campaign now is already working to tie her to the administration's border policy, which is seen as a total disaster. So here is the story from uh, Axios where, you know, we are 
seeing them use the word appointed by Biden as border czar. So if you go to Axios, there are several articles characterizing IRS's White House portfolio as overseeing the migration crisis at the southern border. And now, if she says that this was never an official title, well, there is something that is not going to add up. That I'm going to show you in just a few slides from now. Axios has been hilariously trying to do a cleanup and, and not successful one at that. Interestingly, Axios has been now joined by many mainstream media such as Time, USA Today, The Wall Street Journal and CBS News. Heck, in DGI, Daily Global Insights, we had done many, many articles, many, many episodes where we talked about Kamala Harris not doing anything as the borders are. Now, Congressman Guy Reshenthaler, a Republican from Pennsylvania, said at a House Rules Committee hearing on Tuesday, today we are at, on Thursday, that Biden appointed Harris as the borders are 64 days into his administration. That would uh, add up, right? January 20th, the official administration took place. January 20th, 2021. The article that uh, uh, Steph wrote is in April. So it's about 64 days. Makes sense, right? So the hearing focused on an emergency resolution addressing the failures of the border czar position and its negative impact on our fellow citizens across the country. Now, in the April 2021 article, Harris had uh, gone to Mexico and Guatemala to address migration levels. And Axis wrote that the vice president was appointed by Biden as the border czar. Another article covering her appointment to the role in March 2021 was headlined, Biden puts Harris in charge of border crisis. Political reporter Steph Knight authored the latter article, the same journalist who wrote today's piece, that is two days ago, denying that Harris was placed in charge of the um, border. So the million dollar question is, will Axios correct the record about Harris's role, which according to an associated press report from her initial appointment was to lead the White House effort to tackle the migration challenge at the U.S. southern border. The management of the U.S.-Mexico border has been a political liability for Biden and it will now follow Harris as Trump makes it a cornerstone of his campaign. Over the last three years, an unprecedented number of border crossings have come to define this administrative immigration record. In fact, you can see videos of Biden going to the border and then waving to them and say, come, 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 come. It's as bad as that. And then there is the vice president trying to stop that. What nonsense are they peddling? As the vice president team began strategizing, the problem facing the administration grew. Hence the need to walk it back. Seven months later, it was migrants arriving from even farther away in South America. We're talking about uh, 2021. Former Acting Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Mark Morgan told the Post that the data is irrefutable, showing that VP Harris has overseen the worst unmitigated border security crisis in our lifetime. Her performance has negatively impacted every aspect of our country's safety and national security and can only be described as a complete failure, says Morgan. Now, here is where the truth comes out, guys. There was a border czar before Kamala Harris. I'm just going to come to that in one moment. But in the post, um, you know, empire period of Russia, the word czar was used several times, for example, in the FDR administration. During World War II, there was a transportation czar, there was a shipping czar, and there was even a synthetic rubber czar. So, Kamala Harris was the replacement for Biden's previous border czar, Roberta Jackson, who formally stepped down from the post a few weeks after the president announced Harris's new responsibilities. Essentially, he was shoving out Roberta Jackson. Somebody needed to occupy that post and that post was given to Kamala Harris. Ergo QED. She was the border czar. She screwed up royally. If this is going to be uh, rated on her as a record, this is an F. I mean, if there's a lower grade than F, I would give her that. So just now, uh, even if she keeps saying that she is not a border czar, but the root causes are, how does that work out? Somewhere along the line, this is just not working for her. 8 million to 15 million. These are the numbers we hear. Some people say downplay, it's just 8 million are here. Some say 15 million, of which the documented illegals, meaning 
those people who will have to have a day in the court where a judge will determine whether they can stay indefinitely in the United States or not, that I don't know. What is the number? That could be 30% of this, it could be 80% of this. Because when so many millions are coming in, there is no way to keep track of who is coming in and who is going. Nobody has been given papers. We have seen this so many times in various YouTube videos. So, the American public's mood on immigration and the border has soured dramatically in the last two years. And this, if it is hung on the neck of Kamala Harris, this was your first assignment as vice president. And guess what? You royally failed. So, this alone is enough to derail her presidential campaign. I'm afraid I have to tell you the truth. Kamala Harris has a very, very difficult road to hoe in front. But stranger things have happened. This is where I think I'd like to stop this uh, monologue and request all of you to please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.